Okay, thank you everybody for coming here. <clears throat> this session is about the layout. I hope that a lot of people already know it, know something about it. And I will first, uh, okay. I want to ask you how many of you already know something about the layout or have used it? That's a good, <laughs> that's good news. But, uh, First of oh, starting the session, uh, oops, it's not working. Okay. Um, yesterday, someone told me that Manuel Rubio, which is a Joomla contributor, and she died. And you know that Joomla is about all together as a whole. And I was thinking about uh, a Joomla dying and nobody knowing that he's dead for 10, di 10 days. So, so this is Manuel. He's a, mostly a Spanish contributor. And I want us to say thanks to Manuel, giving him a... <laughs> so this is me. Uh, most of you, or I know you, a lot of you. But I'm a PHP and JavaScript freelance. I'm developing with PHP since 2010 and with Joomla since 2011. I'm in the top 25 CMS contributor. I love open source, Linux user, and I use Git for everything. And my last big thing is to use Gulp for things. So this is me. So uh, what is J layout? I, I'm happy to see that a lot of you already know it, but it's a rendering system um, like Blade, Twig, a lot of you know what renders are. Basically, what they do is to get data from the application and to render that data to see, to tell uh, the browser how it has to be shown, how the data has to be shown, process it. And it had some cool part that we are going to review now. Uh, I didn't create J layout. There is a bit of confusion about that. Uh, it was Janik Galtier, and he created it mainly uh, the first time that J layout was inside the core. It was to render the, uh, the backend sidebar. So it was like something that uh, was useful, but, but after that it grew, and now it's a much better system. Uh, there have been a lot of additions to JLayout. No support uh, dynamic uh, component. I don't want to talk about uh, the specific JLayout features because there are already uh, magazine documents and I have written a couple of blog articles, so I wanted to skip that. But the information is in, in the Joomla magazine and in my blog, so you can find it there. Uh, and the uh, layout is now one of the few things that we know that uh, is going to be the part of the future of Joomla. Uh, I hope George agrees on that. <laughs> so it's going to be a system to render the fields, the views, a lot of things. Everything that has to be rendered inside Joomla uh, is, is going to be to use uh, the layout, so it's good that you know it. And uh, you will see that it's a powerful uh, tool, but it still, it still needs a lot of improvement. And seeing things like Twig or other rendering systems, it's like a first step in the right direction because uh, Joomla does not have now a, a renderer itself, it's including the templates directly, which is work, it works, but Technically, it's much better to have a, a render uh, layer where you have, can pass uh, the data and it renders the things. You can replace the render in the future, for example, if we do it uh, architecturally well. Uh, you can replace that render with Twig or whatever is desired in the future. And then, what can I use JLayout for? Uh, as I said, it's to render anything inside Joomla. Uh, the easier part now, I think, is to use it to render modules or plugins or 
order to show it all. Um, the fields, for example, when you have a field, now what we are doing in core is to to put the HTML markup in the get input function, which is not overridable. Uh, there is a, a, part, a small part of JLayout integrated that was contributed by George, that is the render field. Uh, you know, in Joomla, we have something, I'm going to show it. In Joomla, we have, uh, we are using uh, bootstrap doors markup. So what, uh, this is the layout for the field, and what it does is to render the the container of the field. So just just rendering, just changing, overriding this layout, you can, uh, for example, use the Bootstrap three markup to to show the the fields. And I think that's a great way to save uh, this kind of lines. If you see a lot of components, they are using, they are repeating these four lines which is mostly HTML markup. So uh, this allows templators to change all the forms just uh, overriding this layout. I'm going to try to search how it's used. So you have an example. Oops. This is the right way. This is how it's used. And in previous versions, you could find something like uh, copy pasting this, something like, like this. This was, this was what we were using in the past. When was this, um, it was in 3.2. 3 well, uh, the layout per se, it was uh, in a previous version. I don't remember when it was. I contribute, but I think it's in the three series. Not sure when, but uh, okay. but uh, uh, starting to think in uh, JLayout layout as something that you can reuse or it can be used to render more things than a sidebar it was like in three two, two, uh, two, right? Not two. So this is a first example. Uh, Instead of, you can multiply this for four lines or HTML markup. So we are having just here like 40 lines of code. And uh, additionally, it's overridable at a template level. It's compatible with Bootstrap 2, Bootstrap 3, whatever you want. So this is one of the advantages. Um, it can be used uh, to render anything, the, the harder part now is to render the component views uh, because it has to be backward compatible. But in your own extensions, you have total freedom to do whatever you want. You are going to break your own rules. So uh, I uh, everything I render, I use JLayout now for fields, anything. Uh, what is JLayout in the in the CMS tree? It's inside the libraries folder, CMS subfolder, and layout. I'm going to show it. I hope it's big enough. This is the folder, and it's just four files, but are, it's very small. It's like 200 lines. Most of them are just empty. <coughs> and the main, the main render is the layout file. This is the main class, which has uh, most of the methods. The other parts are uh, the interface and a base layout system that you can inherit in other classes, or in other rendering, renderers. So this is the structure. We have the base class, the main renderer, a fast use helper. I'm going to show it. The helper is uh, just a, a way to pass to a new layout, pass data to tell, tell which layout you are going to render, the base path where finding that layout and the options, and then it passes the, the display data, which data has to be rendered inside that layout. We are going to see how to improve this. So, uh, One of the big benefits of JLayout is that it, it already supports overriding, 
and it's, it supports overriding, but it has more layer, more layers than standard overriding in Joomla. In Joomla, you can, if you have a view, you can override that view in a template, for example, which is cool. If you have a module, you can create an override in the, in the HTML folder of your template. But JLayout adds a new uh, folder hierarchy. So uh, this is from uh, highest priority to lower priority. So first, it will charge uh, a layout, an override, a specific override for this component. Let me tell you an example. If you are going to show tags, for example, uh, tags is using a common layout that is inside the uh, layout Joomla folder. But if you want to uh, customize how that tags are shown in your component, you can do it. Additionally, the, in the first uh, path, it will be the path where a templater will change how the layouts are shown in your specific component. The second path is where you uh, say how you want to render it in your component. The third path is a global override for all the tags layouts in all the components if they don't have a custom uh, layout and the third part is the, the the fourth path is the the layout folder which is here this is all, where all the layouts are inside Joomla so mostly inside the Joomla folder layout Joomla so um, also you have uh, the book mode in, in all systems, it doesn't make sense because you have, uh, you know where it's loaded. It can be a template override, or it can be in the in the, the view or the module. But adding so many paths, you need a way to know where is it, where the layouts are being loaded from. So JLayout now includes uh, the book system that you can use to. It will show you uh, which route has been used. I'm going to show it. I'm going to edit a component view, for example. Okay. This is rendering the print icons. So uh, here we are using JLayout helper. This is the uh, the layout that is going to be rendered, which is inside Joomla content icons. So it's inside layouts Joomla content icons this is the layout that is going to be shown and what I'm going to do this is the layout this is the data for the layout this array and it supports two additional parameters the first is the base path that we are not going to use it and the last one is the options that the layout supports so enabling the book is something as easy as adding the book well true and here you have it it says which layout is being trying to load, the include path, what file is searching for, and if it found it, it tells you uh, the path to that file. So it's pretty useful. Uh, I think this is better that you have if you have extensions. You can have a global uh, debug parameter. So this is automatically used, uh, done using something like is the book enabled? So you don't have to uh, enable the book for one layout. You can uh, enable or disable it for as a global parameter for your component, your module. <coughs> Sorry. And this will help templates or because uh, users are still not uh, comfortable with gel layouts. It's something new, so it's better to provide them. Uh, Way to the back. Okay. The advantages of the layout is it's using core. It's going to be used in core for a long time, so it's like a good bet. Uh, you can reuse the layout. Uh, if you are going to show an article, you can use the same layout showing the article in the article view, in the module view, in a plugin showing uh, related articles. So uh, it can be a, a, a 
very useful. And overridable, we have already seen it. Uh, one of the most important things that uh, we don't think a lot about that, but uh, where is the limit between the backender and the frontender? Where the backender should stop and say, here you have the data and do with it whatever you want. So it clearly defines where uh, my job ends and where the frontender job starts. Uh, it's debuggable, we have seen. And uh, you can inherit, uh, have some kind of sub layouts with this. Uh, apparent layout, if you have an invoice, for example, you have the invoice header, the products of the invoice, you can have a parent layout and then sub layouts for each of the, of the parts of the invoice. And that also allows people to override just the header of the invoice because they want to change how the uh, customer info is shown. And it's also catchable, it's not enabled. I hope to contribute that uh, here in Jimland and Beyond. So, uh, what uh, I want to contribute is that in the, uh, let me show it. I hope I have still the code. What? Have a branch somewhere. <laughs> Let me show it in the the pull request. Okay, this one. Yeah. No repository. I don't have the branch. I hope that it's uh, rules. Let's hope this is the the good one. This is going better. <laughs> well, we can see it in the in the pull request. What I did is to add a debug system for the layout and integrate it with the uh, debug plugin inside Joomla. Here it is. So we now have the memory of the system, which is being used by Joomla, the database queries. And what I did is to uh, integrate which, which layouts have been loaded inside that. If you are, for example, this is a form view. So it's telling you uh, which layouts have been used, have been used uh, which, how many times they are being rendered. For example, there are 72 fields. So the label layout is 72 times. And this is all the layouts, how much time each layout has taken. And this is the file searches, how many of them have been already been found. So the search has been skipped. And the cache times. Uh, so instead of loading 171 uh, files, it has been, it has loaded less than 40 files. So uh, one of the things that I want to contribute being here is the, the that, that part. I hope that it was to be it had to be inside Joomla 3.5, but I had to step down from release leader. So sorry. Is there an easy way to display all the data outs uh, on one page? So the designers can just 
That can be done with the, the book parameter that I have shown before, but it's not ready. The, the layout it needs another step in the, in the right direction. You could enable, for example, the layout for fields, so it shows the wrapper of the fields, something like that, but it's not now. You cannot do it now. It's easy to do, but... Yeah. You want to install the standard layout? Yeah. Ah, uh, your own layout? Yeah, for my library. Yeah. My I, I will show it later. Okay. I have, what you have to do is to change, uh, not install the, well, you, you, you put the layout inside your library, yeah. but uh, what you do is to extend the layout to in, uh, inject your path, your library path. So, so that's cool, because you can still, uh, use the standard overriding system, but you inject. Yeah, the base path, it's different. The base, if you if you use a base path, it's not using that hierarchy that we have seen. It, you, it will use that view, that path for, for the layouts. So if you tell, uh, search the layouts in plugins, uh, system, whatever, it won't search in the template. Base, base path is an old thing that is was search the layout specifically in this in this folder. So um, and how is the uh, layout helping core now already? It's helping a lot in removing more tools and bootstrap dependencies. We have seen how the control control group <coughs> inside uh, forms. And using the layout, you have you can abstract your code from the markup. You have the layout, and you can say, oh, okay, in, a comp in my component setting, I want to use Bootstrap 3 markup. Uh, as I was saying, you can have uh, different folders for Bootstrap 3 and Bootstrap 2 uh, layouts, and even share some of the layouts you can share between between them. Uh, it will allow us. Uh, to customize all the markup. In Joomla, we have things that don't allow that all that is shown in the browser cannot be overriding, overriding. So using the layout, we have push that. Uh, an example that is the latest thing that is has been contributed by Dimitri. Not here. But uh, he has used uh, the layout then in your component, you can have your own custom model. If you want to use, for example, Bootstrap 3 models, you can already do it in backend. Right. You have to tell how to load Bootstrap 2 and Bootstrap 3. That, that's another fight. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, helping us to follow uh, best practice because uh, as I told you, uh, having the data separated from the view, it uh, will help us to to don't jump that line, don't don't break the rules, and uh, let frontenders do their job and backenders do our job. And uh, hopefully we we will get the layout not just as a renderer, but avoiding us to repeat things like we did with modules and we did it again with Bootstrap 2, which is I think is a an evolution. But you cannot be tied to a, a renderer. And we were saying that the layout is our renderer and you can only use the layout, that's not right. You always have to allow the extension developers to put in a tweak, blade, or whatever they want. <coughs> and it allows already, as I showed you before, the, the, the core layouts can be already customized at a, an extension level. So a module, uh, the same layout can be shown differently in a module and in, in core. And how it's used? We have already seen it. But this is a standard call using the helper. This is the render method. This is the, the fast way to use the layout. This is the layout to render. For example, article tags. The the dot between article and tags. It will be replaced with a dash, a slash, and that PHP will be added at the end. So uh, this is the data. 
uh, it's important that this data uh, is always the same and I, I recommend you that you use uh, an array of data always we have done uh, mistakes in the past and we are calling a layout passing him passing it already uh, a view for example and using met that view methods inside the layout which is terrible if you need for example a view to have uh, uh, let's say um, get toolbar for example that is a common method inside the the view dot html php file and what uh, we are doing now is inside the layout if you want to get the toolbar or something like that you can call the view the the a view method inside the toolbar right. let me show it <laughs> <coughs> i'm here and let's say that uh, i have to save it in the display data oh, let's use the the content icons here for example let's say that if i have here display data as we can see here and if i receive the view i could do something like but we are doing this i think so you can do something like get toolbar but you are using a method of view inside uh, the layout uh, better than this when you are going to call the, the layout instead of allowing the layout to use the view inside it what you have to do is for example here I can use toolbar and here I use the view get toolbar instead of uh, tying the layout to a view what I do is to pass directly the, the information that the layout needs to be to use it will be easier for template developers because they will already have something like toolbar here this will be the bar available inside the layout and they don't have to deal with view methods so it's better for everybody uh, this is the base path that we have been talking before uh, uh, this base path won't be overridable at a template level uh, and it doesn't support uh, arrays for example so uh, we cannot use it really now uh, m mostly for plugins or you can use it and this is the options uh, this is uh, the debug one but there are there are also for component you can specify where uh, which component will be searching for layouts for example if i want to show my tags exactly what like com content does it i could do something like let me do it here we say that we had another parameter that it was the base path and then i could use something like com job uh, sorry component When when you do this, the layout will search the the uh, the com job folder in the uh, layout hierarchy that we have seen before. Look back, you see it. Oh, I hope it works. Okay. Here we are saying that uh, com my component will be the active component, so it will automatically search in the active component. But what uh, passing the com the component uh, parameter to the, the component option to a layout instead of searching in the active my uh, com my component, it will search directly on com job five fifteen. So it's like a, a way to search a specific layout outside the active. Folder. For example, if you are reusing a, a in a inside a module, you have a component. If you are using a component layout, but your module can be rendered when another component is active, so you can specify which component will be checked. But I can override it by GNA host helper because the variant in the GNA host helper. Yeah. I override it and then yeah, but. You can override the, the 
the layout, but it won't, it, it won't be overridable at the template level. For example, when I want to override uh, co content article titles yeah. in a plugin, or content default to content default. Yeah, you can do it. But what happens if someone wants to change how your plugin. One after the page, I change the Gmail title as possible. To support, but you are uh, already supporting multiple layout, so we will search at the template override for your plugin. Oh, that's perfect. That's the right way to do it. <laughs> so we were here. It takes it just the the active component. So if you are rendering. Uh, it's useful, for example, for the tags example. It will render the tags, but the extension developer, the component developer, can customize how that tags will be shown. And that's the complex uh, quoted. It's not complex, but uh, calling, uh, creating an instance of the layout. The first parameter is the the layout that is going to be uh, rendered, and the the second, uh, well, then you call the render method, passing it the, the data that you want to render, which is in this case is the article. And then, what should I use? This is my recommendations. Uh, when you have a, a class, uh, for example, you are on your inside your views or a module class, uh, it's better that you use the the layout file, creating an instance, and then. Uh, customize how that instance is going to be passed or, or, or to be used. We will see it later. And uh, in layouts, inside layout, when you are going to render another layout, it's better the, to use the helper because uh, it's just one line. And it's easy to see what's being what's being done. Um, this is uh, uh, useful PHP functions that we can use with uh, the layouts. We have seen. Inside the layout, we have here display data, which is magically is the uh, you have a variable a variable inside the layout. You have something like I'm going to show it. So this is the the content of the variable. So. Magically, that variables is is inside your layout, but you don't have, you don't know what is inside that variable. So a cool command is to do something like extract uh, display data. Uh, what is going to be? Uh, if you have a, a parents, for example, we will have here a parents variable already available for for us, for example, params. Here you have it. So, what extract does is if you have an associative array, like A is cat, B is dog, C is horse, um, after using extract, you have already that uh, uh, array K, uh, the, the, K, the K of uh, the array will be converted to variables. So, I can use directly A, the A variable, the B variable. And this is the example how it's used inside core. And there is the, uh, this is what I have said before. Uh, there is also the, op the uh, opposite command, that it, which is compact. Let's see, uh, there is an example here. Is that uh, exactly the opposite. If you have a first, first name variable here, and you want to use it inside the layout, you can use compact and say which variables you are going to use. If you have to use uh, Blade in Laravel, for example, they use a lot of compact. And this is, uh, instead of having to create an array here uh, and saying article is article, you can use directly compact. Compact article, and it will pass directly to the layout the article variable. Uh, then, this is the best practice that we can follow. Uh, always pass arrays. Uh, to layouts, never pass a uh, view directly and use the methods inside, like we have said before. Uh, send only the data that the layout 
requires. Uh, we tend to add a lot of information. For example, if you are in the uh, in an article view, you could pass the params, the article, a lot of uh, data that is uh, available inside the article. But when you are rendering an article, what do you need? You need mostly the, the article and its params. So just pass the article and the article parameters that can be uh, taken from the article directly. So uh, give templates uh, an easy way to know what is being used inside your layout. Uh, use a global debug mode that we have already said. And it's a good practice that you always divide the layouts in smaller parts when you have something complex like uh, uh, invoice, for example. You can, the header of the invoice, the body of the invoice, the footer of the invoice. We, we did that for models, for example. You have the, head, the model header, the model body, and the model footer. That's already in the core if you want to check how it's done. Ah, let's say it. So uh, this is these are the layouts for a model. This is the main model layout, and what's doing there is loading a JavaScript, and inside that is loading the header, just checking if the if the header of the model has to be rendered, and then just call another layout, which is inside model header. This is this layout. Keep it simple. You have the model header is this one. Then in uh, the body, doing the same for the body and the footer. That allows if I, I have to, I want to create a corporative models, adding always my logo, my company logo or something like that. I just have to override the footer, for example, which is adding here whatever I need. And I don't have to override or to change all the files. If Joomla changes uh, the layout for model, I can already use them because I have just modified a small part of the layout. Uh, this is an example of that. We have the article, which is the main layout, then the article title, then you can have the article description, but also an, in, uh, the intro text of that description. So you, have, you can show uh, the full text of the intro text. Um, it's a J layout is a way of thinking. So start thinking that an article can be shown inside a module and can be shown exactly the same that is being shown in the article view, for example. Or you want to show related articles like that. Um, the, uh, if you have a, a neat and form and you are using Bootstrap 2 in front end and back end, you can share directly that layout for front end and back end. If you put inside the, the library the form, and then if you want in the in the front end of the component change something of that, uh, for example, I, I have an article form. If I have used sub layout in in front end, I could say uh, I'm going to show an article form, but hey, hide this field for front end. So in, in my component folder, let me show it. If you have a layout global folder like this, let's let's say that this is my component, my component. So I have an article folder, and then I have a. This will be the best. Create a form, and then a folder for all the the sub form layouts. Let's say that we have uh, three tabs. We have one layout for permissions, one layout for uh, publishing, or whatever. I, I don't know what. Okay. So in the main layout, I will call the for each tab. I will call uh, another sub layout, and then in the in my component, let's say that I have. My component here. Com my component is not the same name. 
but I can have a layouts insider here, layouts, and I can have, uh, let's say that I want to change how the permissions are shown in front end, for example. So here I only have to create a article form and put inside the permissions. Rest of the of the layouts will be inherited from my library, but the the specific uh, permissions layout will be loaded directly from my, tem my template. That's because the the component inheritance we said before. So just overriding uh, one layout, which I can leave empty, or if I want to change the global aspect because I don't want to show tabs, I want to show a website. So I could display, I would, I could change the main layout to wrap it in uh, boxes or panels or whatever I want, and uh, the sub layouts would be still the same. Okay. So start thinking in, in that way of reusability. It's a good way. Uh, for example, another example is an article slider can be shown in a category when you want to show. Uh, a slider of images from, for articles, you can show it in a category view or in a module. So it's the same layout. Try to uh, think in how are you able to reuse that layout. <coughs> and uh, another uh, useful trick is that the same layout, you have uh, an article, you can add a container inside that, uh, above that article, adding a, a keyword. Uh, a class for that container, and you can style the same markup differently. So it's being shown like this. What I do us usually is to do the article title, which is the the, the bottom part. Right? This is the which is inside the layout, and then the article box is like a parent layout that contains the the title, the description. So I can style everything, just changing how the article box class is being added. Uh, we have talked before that uh, templates, frontenders, they don't know how uh, you don't like it. <laughs> templates, they don't know uh, which bars are inside the variable. If we use uh, extract method that we said before, uh, what I have to style, which information I have here to style it. So uh, putting something like this on top of your layout says the template, okay, you have a view, you have the view title with this a string, the toolbar. So they have all the information. Of course, they could print uh, the or bar dump the, the display data, but uh, here's a good way that, hey, frontender, I'm thinking you. This is, they don't know what's, what your application doing. That's why, for example, uh, using a view method for them is something complex. And then uh, Nicholas was talking before about how to do, how to inject my layout paths or my include paths inside the layout. What I always recommend is that you create inside your library uh, your own version of your own layer over J layout. So we have here PHP Roberto layout file that's just extending the layout file. And you have to do the same for the helper because inside the helper we have a, a, a method that has to be replaced. So it's easy to, to extend it. You only have to extend two files. And you have your own uh, layout system. For example, I could call it PHP Roberto render instead of layout file. No, I'm free to do or use namespaces or whatever I want to do. And this is important to know the templates. For templates, it's not good or for, for frontenders, it's not good to do this at a template level because if you use, a, if you in, in an override of a module, for example, you use uh, your own render, let's say PHP Roberto render. Uh, when Joomla is uh, building my, uh, displaying the website, um, it won't be able to uh, ac uh, access to my render because it's checking in the parent component. So 
you have to do some tricky things like in, uh, including at the template level but it, uh, it doesn't work so in templates in overrides it's better to always use the layout file the layout helper but in modules plugins components you can uh, i recommend you to create your own layout system um, yeah. Let me show it. I think it's, it's later. But I'm going to show it uh, how I do it. It's an example. Uh, this is the yellow out. You got. Let's hope it's being saved. This is what get the default include path. So you can say that the uh, which path should it search for. So in my uh, uh, layer, in my own layer, layer, what I'm saying is, hey, first uh, use the template component of the right, but the cool part is here, which is uh, I'm adding my own layout folder here. So always search in my in my layout. Exactly. You have the, the same. Uh, well, it's, it's it's already inside core. What we are doing is the same that core is doing here. This is uh, the way that core does the same. Uh, it's a bit. Uh, there is a bug inside the add include path, but this is how the hierarchy that I have shown before works. So you could extend this class and just replacing refresh include path, it will work. But you prove that. So uh, uh, we will use. Uh, this is why we have to uh, override the helper because instead of the layout file. Our helper will use our own renderer. And uh, another thing that is useful is when you have you are inside views or inside a module or inside a plugin, what, whatever you want to use uh, layouts in a complex way that we said before, creating an instance of our layout. I recommend you to always create the get, a get renderer method. So in my view, I am in the display. There is a war somewhere. <laughs> Someone is forking Joomla or something like that. <laughs> so this is the get renderer method, and uh, if we think uh, as a developer, we could always create extending our own extended class. I, I hope that this is is I core in, in coming versions. And if I want to plug uh, Twig or Blade or whatever renderer I want to use, I just have to override this method and I will have my own over, uh, templating system injected in my own layout system. Uh, it's also a good practice that you, you uh, put the gay layout path. This is what we were talking before. Uh, gay layout path, this is for views, for my views, for example. And what I'm doing is, okay, I have my renderer, but how I'm, uh, how do I know which folder hierarchy has to check for overrides, for example? So if you had get layout path, and let's say in a plugin, uh, another person that uh, extends your class can change the layout, the layout path easily, just replacing the, the array that is returned. And one of the most important things is the gay layout data. Instead of having something like, well, uh, that's mostly for, for views, but uh, if you have in your, inside your views or, or your uh, module, you, have, uh, you want to know which data will be passed to the module, for example. Uh, if you call a method get layout data, anybody extending your class 
can just replace Gale Layout Data, we will see it later, and just inject more data uh, to the module. For example, if you are in a plugin, and let's say that an article will have some data passed, someone in a plugin will overwrite that get layout data and add additional. So, and this is how it's done. Let's say that I have a parent get layout data, it's the bottom size there, the bottom part. So, uh, I have in my components, I have a base view, which is a J legacy view. And uh, after that, I have a specific forms are automatically uh, specific views automatically generated for form views on list views in backend. So this is for the item form view. And if you check in backend in Joomla, we have a funny thing there. That let's say that I have an article. Ah, it's inside the view. Sorry. If you have article, uh, it was the, the edit. Uh, the edit. We have a display method where mostly in all the views it will get the form, it will get the item, it will get the state, the get the can do. You can see this everywhere. And uh, uh, this part could be already in a parent class, which gets the form, the item. Everything here could be done in a parent class, what I'm doing here. My, the parent class here is just sending me the view, the title, some common things. And this is my form view that is injecting directly the model, the item, the state. So in the chill views, I don't have to specifically, again, in the display data method, do something like that. And the trick is getting the parent get layout data, which will be the base data, and merging that base data with my extract data, which will override. If I want to, uh, let's say that my, the parent method has a title, and I want to change it in my view, I could, in my extra data, create another title, okay, and change the title of the of the view, and pass it to the array merge. So the, I will override that data uh, from the parent class. Uh, uh, if you use it in, you use layout for fields. Uh, another cool uh, thing that I have found is the something like the layout. Let's say that we have we are uh, we have a common problem that is that we need more fields. For example, I have I want to use type ahead, or I want to inject some kind of uh, JavaScript, but what I want to render is a standard text field. Why I have to create another field? If what I just want to do is to inject another JavaScript file. So uh, doing this will allow me to use a standard text field. Uh, forget the PHP Roberto part there. But if, if it would be in core, you could use a, a text specifically using a layout, which is in field, text, money, layout. So I think I have it there. Uh, it's the same logic because the, the field is a text field, but what is doing uh, in the in the override is something like this. This is my layout, which is uh, instead of using the standard field text, I have uh, another layout, but it's loading. For example, this is for a time, time picker, and what I'm doing is okay. Let's do it. Let's load two assets, the CSS and the JS file, and then create uh, a time picker for my field, which is the ID. And then instead of rendering again a, a text field, what I'm doing is directly calling the parent, uh, the standard the text field, the field uh, text layout. So uh, what I'm doing here is a trick to just load two assets, uh, connect the, the time picker to the text field, and then use the standard text layout, which may fix some bugs in the future. So I don't want to deal with changes there. I just want to create my own custom layout that would override it and it's important when you uh, use layouts uh, like Nicholas was saying before I want my own layouts in my libraries and then uh, what happens if, if someone creates a field layout uh, field text for example if it's searching the hierarchy it can be tricky so if you add a like a 
namespace that is a mine folder where all your layouts are there. You can think that it's, it's a bit stupid because I have one library with my layouts and I have layouts, PHP Roberto, and then all the layouts. But it's a good practice because it's not going to conflict with anything. Your fields, and if someone wants to override your layout, uh, it can exact, uh, know that it's going to exactly modify your fields. The, the, the type of the field? Yes, the Inside the layout? Well, what I do for for the for fields, uh, I specific, I already know which uh, which field I'm rendering because I structure things like th like this. Field. Here I have all my fields. Yeah. So this is uh, I know that here that I'm in a in a calendar field that you cannot. Well, you have. If, uh, it depends. For example, I, I came and received directly the field. So you can check, for example, the get element, the element of the field, and check type. You could do it. In, uh, yeah. Just that, uh, what I would do is in the in the JFORM field class, get all the base data, which is the element, the type, all that things ha can be provided by the main JFORM field class, and then the text field will only inject. The, in the get layout data method will only inject its own specific attributes or whatever. But uh, I think I have it there. In get layout data, this is my main field class, which is uh, like a JFORM field, that is my own system. And what I'm doing is in the parent class, all that. Uh, that, that all that this information that uh, is received by all the by all the fields, autofocus, class, the book description, is disabled, enabled. All this information, I don't want to again do it this in all my fields. So my parent class gets all that that this information for me, and then in my calendar I can uh, get a specific attribute for my calendar. But if you pass uh, the field like this. You can uh, do whatever you want inside. Uh, this is for J, J libraries. For libraries, I think we are a bit late. But, uh, it, uh, for libraries, it's very important because we have things like this. If you have a, a variable that is $HTML, I hate you because it means that you are doing something wrong. And this this is inside core. We have things like this. Uh, well, it's not your fault. It was like things work uh, ten years ago, but not now. Start using a renderer. So uh, a template, for example, could, cannot override this because this is inside a library. And what it can do is uh, to avoid to call that library, but it will have to remain the wheel. <laughs> uh, one of the most po powerful uh, things that I have found is using the layout for with Ajax. Uh, uh, with Ajax, you can uh, return uh, directly to a layout renderer, for example, to display a form. I'm going to show it. Uh, I created an extension for a component and it was changing. Let me disappear. I have to remove it, so I will install it again. Let's uninstall it. Okay. Let's hope. Let's try it. Now. This one. 
Okay, I have it. No worries, I have another version. I have to test it in a lot of Joomla, so I think here is. Yeah, yes, here is installed. So what I wanted is uh, in. Don't ask me why, but in Red Component uh, there are some websites that have a complex uh, group structure. So they have like more than 1,000 uh, user groups, and uh, it's uh, like uh, when you create uh, an install, the groups are generated automatically, which can be okay. But I don't think that Joomla has been even uh, never tested with so many groups, like. I think it was 40,000. 40, it was so crazy. So what happens when you render the permissions of the of in Joomla? What Joomla does is to check for all the groups. It checks uh, the access group checks the the permission for that user for that user. For the, multiply that for thousands of groups, and then what this this here instead of checking the the group. What I'm doing here is uh, loading the setting. This this form is rendered with J layout, so it's done it's done by Ajax. And when when I click, for example, here, what is doing here is to get the instead of loading all the groups. When I click here, let me show it again. Another request is being done with Ajax, and yeah, okay, specifically check this group. Uh, and give me the, the HTML that I have to show. So it's like very fast, and it's like it was taking like for four minutes and oh no, it was more than eight minutes. I have a video somewhere. <laughs> and well, you can you can return render information, and for example, you have a module uh, lazy load things. Uh, you click a button and more items are loaded. Things like that. Uh, you have a products view. You can change from grid to list view directly. Uh, display the forms, at which I have some. And uh, this is the example. Uh, well, I think we are late. Then. In templates, uh, if you have if you have the article that I have shown you before, before you can have a standard markup for articles, and then uh, customize it for uh, share it for all your templates. I have a Booster 3 template uh, that will change how it's shown, but uh, not ha without having to change the markup. The form, because we, sh we saw before that we can show the a form in different parts. And uh, you, have, you can have a layout for different frameworks. If you template, uh, usually a template is a bad example because they are mostly tied to Booster 2 or Booster 3. But you could uh, have a template that is compatible with Bootstrap 2, Bootstrap 3. And uh, this is an example of uh, something that I have for a client. And let's see that this is, I have a layout in my, in my template. Inside I have a com content, which is all the layout that I use for, for com content. And then I have a blog view for my article, the date, the date or publish it or something like that the description that i have shown before the image of the article all that layout i can reuse it in my in all my templates or, or use a module and say okay in this module i want to show the title and an image the intro image i have also the two three or four columns layout so it's starting to think in something like that and form modules is the same it's the, the Ajax, uh, ha having uh, the book switcher, and uh, using the layout generators and for plugins. So it's, it's almost the same for everything, so it's done. <laughs> Question? Questions?